How do you feel knowing that there are intersex kids out there who have not been given the chance to make their own decisions about their bodies? I feel really sad because since I've gotten to make my own decision, it's just been really fun. And I feel it's really sad that they've had their autonomy taken away and their rights taken away. When I woke up from that surgery, the first thing I did was put my hands between my legs and I felt tons of stitches and tons of like rough edges that weren't there before. And I knew something was wrong. I'm in Chicago and I'm on my way to meet up with Pigeon Pagonis, an intersex individual who experienced a non-consensual genital surgery at birth. Hey, Callie. That's Thank Callie. You. <laughs> we could like sit here if you want. Very when I was four, they decided that my clitoris was too big to be a normal girl. Pagonis was born intersex. Doctors told their parents that Pagonis had an enlarged clitoris and a small vaginal opening that required surgery to correct. Eventually, doctors performed various surgeries on Pagonis with the intent of creating the appearance of more typical female genitalia, but there was no actual medical need for these procedures. They didn't tell me I was intersex, but I knew something was wrong with me. Through a process, I get my medical records, and as I flip through my medical records, I'm now 18, I see that there was a surgery when I was um, four years old, and they did surgery on my clitoris. Pagonis is not alone in this experience. Up to 1.7% of people are born intersex, meaning they are born with reproductive or sexual anatomies that don't fit the average definition of male or female. Newborns have roughly the same chance of being born intersex as they do of having red hair. That means around 60,000 babies in America annually could be born intersex. Also, about 1 in 2,000 babies are born different enough that surgery may be recommended. Historically, how do you think the medical community has failed the intersex population? They've been failing us by not, number one, giving us no bodily autonomy whatsoever. Zero. We don't have bodily autonomy as intersex kids. They come in and make decisions about our gender, about our biological sex, and about our hormones, and about our bodies from the get-go. Doctors perform an undocumented number of non-consensual, medically unnecessary genital surgeries on these children, with the goal of making it easier for intersex kids to grow up, quote, normal. But instead, this often results in irreversible physical and psychological harm. For decades now, medicine has really pathologized um, what intersex is and what intersex bodies are and sort of treated it as a disease rather than a difference. I spoke with Dr. Eileen Wong, a urologist who once assisted on a surgery performed on an intersex teen. It was only after the surgery was finished that Dr. Wong realized the patient was not fully informed about the procedure. Dr. Wong has since become an advocate for the rights of intersex and gender nonvariant patients. She was actually a, a teenager at that time. She had um, no uterus, um, even though she outwardly looked completely phenotypically female, um, but she had undescended testes. It was only later, after the surgery, I realized how inadequate her consent had been. She did not realize that in doing in removing the, the gonads, we were actually removing her only source of hormones. So she needed she was basically menopausal because of what we had done. Groups like the World Health Organization and Human Rights Watch are increasingly calling for doctors to stop performing medically unnecessary surgeries on intersex children at birth. Have you come across many intersex patients who feel a lack of trust with doctors and with the medical system? I would say that um, the rarity is actually intersex people who have any trust in the medical system. A lot of intersex patients feel betrayed not only by their physicians but sometimes by their parents because initially a lot of parents are taught to conceal the diagnosis from their child um, and so their diagnosis is filled with this level of shame and stigma um, which is incredibly damaging from even from very young age. Because of a slowly growing awareness of intersex individuals, not all parents are giving in to the pressure from surgeons. 
I travel to Bellingham, Washington to meet one of these families. Hi. 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 My name is Ori. I am 11 years old and I identify as intersex and trans and my pronouns are they, them. Ori was born intersex. Doctors advised their parents, Christina and Josh, to consent to genital surgeries and raise Ori as a girl. Instead, Ori's parents decided against surgery and have allowed Ori to pave their own way. My name was Oriana and I identified as she, her. And then at the end of first grade, I said, Mom, I feel like there, something went wrong in your tummy. I feel like a bo boy. And so then I changed my name from Oriana to Alex. My pronouns were he, his, and I lived as a boy. But then we went to Phoenix, Arizona for an intersex conference. And I met, and I met so much a great intersex people. So then I felt like non-binary was more right for me. We were definitely advised that surgery was the best option. Ori has testes in their lower abdomen and they wanted to remove those and do the surgeries um, necessary to solidify a female gender assignment. Um, but luckily we were able to research and go in very well informed. Um, and so I was asking them questions like, you know, what percentage of certainty do you have that my child will feel female? And I think their answer was like 65 to 75%. And I was like, yeah, that's not good enough for me. You, you all have to show me. And, um, yeah, we want to try and tell our house of dreams. This is actually like the fourth greenhouse we lived in. Um, that's look at this sticker is so cute. Maya Thank collects you. Stickers. I love it. I feel like a butterfly represents like uniqueness, individuality. Yeah. Because every butterfly is actually different. Yeah. Even if you don't see it, every monarch has just the slightest different pattern. Yeah. Actually, for a while, it's an interesting part of our story, when they were in Canada and transition, we just had them go as trans. We didn't yeah. want the whole school to know about their intersex diagnosis, or he didn't or intersex variation, or he didn't want them to know, yeah. and they wanted to just pass as trans, and that was their thing, and it was fine. Um, and then it was when we moved here that they came more out. We're bringing a whole group. Um, this is Serena, over here. Hi, everyone. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. This is Tarek, over here, with the camera. Hi that we're not really looking at. We're just carrying on as usual. And today we're gonna to be connecting about the texts that we know and love. And we talk about this idea of kind of traditional experiences versus atypical or untraditional experiences. Um, being a homeschool community is that you and your families have decided well, maybe the untraditional is more authentic and is more right. How do you feel knowing that there are intersex kids out there who have not been given the chance to make their own decisions about their bodies. I feel really sad because since I've gotten to make my own decision, it's just been really fun. And I feel it's really sad that they've had their autonomy taken away and their rights taken away. In August of this year, California became the first state to condemn unnecessary surgeries performed on intersex kids a historic acknowledgement for the intersex community. But even with opposition from health and human rights organizations, several pediatric urologists across the country continue to perform such procedures. I think that a lot of people are taken in by a sort of very idealized uh, vision of what they can do as doctors, you know. There's always a little bit of God complex in, it for, in any surgeon because we like to think that we're fixing people. We like to, f to think that we have a higher purpose and that um, we're doing things for the good of other people. But um, it's also extremely hard to de-intellectualize things. I have a burning desire to see the end of intersex surgeries happening <laughs> in my lifetime, so that's another reason that gets me going every day and gets me awake. Um, but it's hard. It's hard sometimes to believe that we will win. I say we will win, 
I know we will win, but it's hard to, to believe that sometimes. My message to intersex youth is to, is there's always gonna be a place for them and they should be themselves on the inside, but sometimes it's not always safe to come out as intersex. But then somewhere in the world, there is a place for them.